Emma Novel Episode 11 Part 2 Me, my love, cried his wife, hearing and understanding only in part, are you talking about me? I am sure nobody ought to be, or can be, a greater advocate for matrimony than I am, and if it had not been for the misery of her leaving Hartfield, I should never have thought of Miss Taylor but as the most fortunate woman in the world, and as to slighting Mr. Weston, that excellent Mr. Weston, I think there is nothing he does not deserve. I believe he is one of the very best-tempered men that ever existed. Excepting yourself and your brother, I do not know his equal for temper. I shall never forget his flying Henry's kite for him that very windy day last Easter, and ever since his particular kindness last September twelvemonth in writing that note, at twelve o'clock at night, on purpose to assure me that there was no scarlet fever at Cobham, I have been convinced there could not be a more feeling heart nor a better man in existence. If any body can deserve him, it must be Miss Taylor. Where is the young man? said John Knightley. Has he been here on this occasion, or has he not? He has not been here yet, replied Emma. There was a strong expectation of his coming soon after the marriage, but it ended in nothing, and I have not heard him mentioned lately. But you should tell them of the letter, my dear, said her father. He wrote a letter to poor Mrs. Weston, to congratulate her, and a very proper, handsome letter it was. She shewed it to me. I thought it very well done of him indeed. Whether it was his own idea you know, one cannot tell. He is but young, and his uncle, perhaps. My dear papa, he is three and twenty. You forget how time passes. Three and twenty, is he indeed? Well, I could not have thought it, and he was but two years old when he lost his poor mother. Well, time does fly indeed, and my memory is very bad. However, it was an exceeding good, pretty letter, and gave Mr. and Mrs. Weston a great deal of pleasure. I remember it was written from Weymouth, and dated September 28th, and began, My dear madam, but I forget how it went on, and it was signed F. C. Weston Churchill. I remember that perfectly. How very pleasing and proper of him, cried the good-hearted Mrs. John Knightley. I have no doubt of his being a most amiable young man. But how sad it is that he should not live at home with his father. There is something so shocking in a child's being taken away from his parents and natural home. I never could comprehend how Mr. Weston could part with him. To give up one's child. I really never could think well of anybody who proposed such a thing to anybody else. Nobody ever did think well of the Chichills, I fancy, observed Mr. John Knightley coolly. But you need not imagine Mr. Weston to have felt what you would feel in giving up Henry or John. Mr. Weston is rather an easy, cheerful-tempered man than a man of strong feelings, he takes things as he finds them and makes enjoyment of them somehow or other, depending, I suspect much more upon what is called society for his comforts, that is, upon the power of eating and drinking, and playing whist with his neighbors five times a week, than upon family affection, or anything that home affords. Emma could not like what bordered on a reflection on Mr. Weston, and had half a mind to take it up, but she struggled, and let it pass. She would keep the peace if possible, and there was something honorable and valuable in the strong domestic habits, the all-sufficiency of home to himself, whence resulted her brother's disposition to look down on the common rate of social intercourse, and those to whom it was important. It had a high claim to forbearance. Thanks for watching.